Okay, we are now at Leviticus chapter 9. Need to recap a little bit because last week when we were doing Leviticus chapter 8, uh, it continues with chapter 9. So let me just draw something on the uh, whiteboard. Um, in Leviticus chapter 8, we saw that they, the priests themselves were supposed to bring a bull and then two rams as sacrifice. Right, and the bull, the blood of the bull was to uh, be smeared on the altar as well, and so there was an atonement for the altar and for the priests, and so this is for the priests, the sons of Aaron, and they were supposed to stay there for seven days, right. And after seven days, and this will be the eighth day. And so this is something which we, we need to remember because that is what we are talking about. This period of time is in chapter 8. Now we are now in chapter 9. And this refers to here. Eighth day onwards, and that is what chapter 9 is discussing. So let's begin chapter 9. And it came to pass on the eighth day. Remember, it is the day after the seven days. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is important for us to remember that Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel is who Moses is addressing. Now remember, Aaron and the sons, these are the priests, right? The elders of Israel would be the representative of all Israel. The people, the children, right? The children of Israel. So he said to Aaron, this is directed to Aaron and his sons, the priesthood. So take for yourself a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering. Now this is on the eighth day. This is nothing to do with chapter, seven, uh, chapter eight. Without blemish, uh, again, without blemish, I need to emphasize, God wants sacrifices that is free from any problems, uh, whether it's illnesses, whether it's blind, whether it's, uh, no, leg is broken. It, it must be a complete animal, right? And that is the type of animal that you can offer to God. In verse 3, he speaks to the children of Israel, and this would be represented by the elders of Israel, because you can't talk to all million of them, right? So you can talk to the elders of Israel. When you talk to the elders of Israel, uh, this is what you say. Take a kid of the goats as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb. First year, without blemish, as a burnt offering. So there are two, right? Two Two uh, animals. This the the calf here in verse three uh, would be a male, right? A male calf. And then when you talk about a young ram, this would be a sheep. This would also be a male, right? First year, complete, no blemish, as a burnt offering. And it says, also a bull and a ram as a peace offering to korban before the Lord. And then a grain offering with oil. For today the Lord will appear to you. Now the word appear is basically to say, um, to present himself maybe. Okay, present. 
let them see. And God is looking at all this as a ritual that they know that is intentional, that they are clean, they've been atoned, they have given peace offerings, they have given God what he wants in the ritual so that God can appear to them. So I think this is a, a reminder again to Aaron and the sons and the children of Israel that to meet God, you need to meet God on God's terms. So that's the relationship that God wants with man. Not for man to simply come and do whatever you want and say, I am here to see God and uh, God must see me. Uh, and, and hence, this appears to be quite different from how we look at God. Today, we say, oh, we can simply come to God. Actually, I think that would be a misunderstanding of of the, the idea of coming to God. Uh, if God is God, if God is, if we do that for the king of this world, how much more serious and sober must it be for the king of the universe? That's a concept that we need to think through. In verse 5, we see that they brought it as commanded before the tabernacle of the meeting. Before means in front. Right? In verse 5, before means uh, in front, in the face of the tabernacle of meeting, meaning as it faces the front part of the, the tabernacle. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And it's also in a way expressing this. So let me draw this out. If this was the tabernacle, and this would be the exterior part, and then we have a altar, and then we have a basin, and this would be the front of the sanctuary. And this would be holy of holies. So what, what we are now describing is that this is the front, right? And the face of it would be the front. And this would always be pointing east. Always, right? And this is always called the front. The face of the sanctuary is also the front. So this is called the face of the tabernacle. And so when the children of Israel is said to come to the face of God, then we need to understand that God is here in the sanctuary. And so facing, this would be a face, right? And so the people will be out here looking towards the uh, sanctuary or, or to the uh, tabernacle. And that is what it means. Okay. We come back to verse 6. As they came to the front of the tabernacle, Moses said to them, this is the thing which the Lord commanded you to do. Notice it is to do. Is not to think about and stuff like that. And the reason is this. When it is a command, it's, it's an emphasis. Uh, as opposed to say, let me tell you something. Uh, and let me, I, I command you to do something. There is a significant difference. Uh, and, and when I tell something, uh, you just listen and you may, may not do it. But when God says, I command you to do something, what God says has to be done. It is not an option. And so by them doing it, the glory of the Lord will show. Right? That's what it means. So the first thing is, Aaron, go to the altar, offer your sin and burnt offering. Make an atonement for yourself and for the people. So first, to do it for yourself. Offer the offering of the people and make atonement for them as the Lord commanded. And this is a command. 
So it means to Aaron and the people do exactly as God has said. And so again, I remind all of us when we read things of this, coming to God is on God's terms. It is not a free for all and uh, no freestyle. Do what you want. Okay. In verse 8, Aaron went to the altar, killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. So that he, when he, when he and the sons uh, did the, the, the sacrifice for the people, then they will be clean. So the first thing to do is to clean the, the priests. Right? Then the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him, dipped his finger in the blood, put it on the horns of the altar. And then poured the blood at the base of the altar. Why? Because what, for all the instructions, if you don't finish using the blood, you're not supposed to eat it. So the way to dispose of the blood is to pour it onto the ground. And so here he poured it at the base of the altar on the adama on the ground. But the fat, the kidneys, the fatty lobe of the liver of the sin offering he burned on the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide he burned with the fire outside the camp. So always remember fat, right? Fat belongs to God in the offering. Verse 12. And then he killed the burnt offering and Aaron's sons presented to him the blood again. Sprinkle all around the altar. The first one was on the horns of the altar and then pour the blood at the base of the altar. Now he sprinkled all around the altar and they presented the burnt offering to him with pieces and head and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails, the innards and the legs and burned them with a burnt offering on the altar. So a burnt offering is always with fire. Now, after this is done, which is for Aaron and the sons, they now have to attend to the people. So the people's offering, they took the goat, which was a sin offering, killed it and offered for sin, like the first one. And he brought the burnt offering, offered in a prescribed manner. Then he brought the grain offering, took a handful of it, burned it on the altar, beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. And so that would have been exactly what was told in Leviticus chapter 1 and 2. Now, verse 18 now tells us this. The bull and the ram as sacrifice of peace offering for the people. And so Aaron's sons presented to him the blood sprinkled all around the altar. Verse 19, the fat from the bull and the ram, the fatty tail, which covers the entrails and the kidneys, the fatty lobe attached to the liver, they put the fat on the breast and he burned the fat on the altar. But the breast and the right thigh of Aaron waved as a wave offering before the Lord as Moses had commanded him. Again, I highlight the fat, the fatty tail, the fatty lobe, right? They put the fat. So all the fat belongs to God and this is waved together with the right thigh. In our last segment here in verse 22, then Aaron lifted his hand toward the people. How do you lift up your hand toward the people? Now, maybe he was like that. That would be how Aaron had lifted up his hand. Maybe that's how it is done. Okay. And then using that, after doing all these atonement and peace offering and grain offering, and wave offering, he blessed them. Now, this is a, a very common word in the Bible. To bless means to kneel down and present a gift. And so in Aaron blessing the people, the Aaron is actually pronouncing uh, good things upon the people. And came down from the offering, the sin offering, and the burnt offering. And the peace offering, remember there were three. And after doing all this, Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the meeting. 
not all the priests, but only Moses and Aaron, they came out and then blessed the people again. What, what does that mean? When Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the meeting, they went to see God. And in this case, when they came out, they have something to say to the people. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. So what did the people see? Glory, shining light, right? That's what this glory actually means. Glory in a physical sense is light, right? The glory and the importance of God was shown to the people. That the people can actually see the glory of God. Verse 24. And the fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. This is the important part. So let me just explain this to you. On the altar, and then we have the steps to the altar. And on the altar itself, we have the burn offering. And then we have the fat okay that's on the altar and the burnt offering hasn't been consumed yet now this is a very special situation because the burnt offering has to be burned right the burnt offering must see fire but there was no fire described so what did God tell Moses to do Moses went into the tabernacle, came out, blessed the people because God is going to reveal himself to you. And this was what happened. Fire came down from heaven. Fire came down from before the Lord and ate the burnt offering. It consumed, burnt it all up. And the fat, so one and two, was taken out. And, and typically what is going to be seen is when they see God send fire from heaven and consume the offering. So we have this concept. The Lord is a consuming fire. That as God can consume the offering and sending fire from him, he can also consume the people and destroy them as well. So the fire from God is shown both as good in accepting the offering and bad in terms of judging the people. The moment they saw this, what did they do? What did they do? When the people saw it, now notice, saw means they actually can see with their eyes. They were standing in front of the tabernacle. They saw fire coming from above. Now you can see rain, but we never see fire coming down. So fire came down and they shouted. Now what is this shout? Ranan. Ranan is to call out and, and, and it I think I think when you see that it is a cry, I don't think it is so much as a cry of joy in terms of celebration. And that, that you know the modern day let's celebrate uh, before God it doesn't exist in, in the, the Hebrew context. And this shout, I would imagine it would be a shout of, um, how should I say? A shout of fear. Okay. Uh, although the word can also mean a shout of triumph. 
that you know, like the hurrah, you know, God has come. But if you just notice how the description is, they shouted and fell on their faces. And this is humility. And this is obeyance. Obeisance. It is to bow down, to worship God, face to the ground. And the, the, the fear or the shout here, I think is when they saw it immediately, it was a reaction of fire. Because it was, well, I just imagine, we don't normally see fire coming from heaven, but when it comes down, it, it actually creates a, 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 a surprise, you know? And, 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 and it's like, what, what is this? Like, you know, God is so powerful. He could send fire from heaven. That's the kind of thing. And then the reaction with is fall on their faces. Oh, you know, we, we are, we are uh, creatures. Uh, that's before God. I don't know. We need to be atoned of our sins. And that would be the picture that we see here in verse 24. And with this, we complete chapter 9. Any questions? Uh, Pastor, yes. You say the fire came down from above, okay? Yes. So how does this uh, go along with Exodus? Uh, as they moved out of Egypt, there was a fire before them. Ah, okay. The the if you remember in Exodus, there are two things: uh, the pillar of cloud in the day, uh, and the pillar of fire so, at night. Uh, and the pillar of cloud and fire represents the presence of God going before them and showing them where to stop. And that's where God sends it, the angel of the Lord, right? Uh, that has nothing to do with this fire. This fire will be similar to Elijah or the fire calling God the, to send fire, fire to consume the sacrifice when the sacrifice was all covered with water. Yeah, with a, with a prophet of Baal. Yeah. Uh, and so, and, and that would be the same idea. You, oh. They can see God accepting the sacrifice when God sends fire from heaven. So when you look at this, it is a shock. And God is saying, I'm here. I have accepted the sacrifice and you are all good before me. That's why God showed himself. And that would be, I think, how you can see uh, God. You see this word here? The glory of the Lord appear before the people and fire. So this A and B is actually saying the same thing twice. Glory. Right? They saw the appearance of God by the fire that came down to consume the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. That that is the word, the idea together. Okay. Okay. So actually, the fire sort of uh, represent the presence of God. Yes. And uh, the shouting and fell on their faces. Is it a little bit like the Chinese when they see the emperor? They will say man soy, man soy, man. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> this would be a reaction. It was a shock and it was terrifying. When you see fire come from heaven, this is not a uh, fireworks, right? It's not a, a celebratory firework. It is the appearance of God and it will be shocking. And the people were shocked and terrified and they fell on their faces realizing God is before them. And, and, and I think one of the things that we could capture from the, the entire scene is this. God wants to show himself to them, but it is on God's rules and when the people obeyed and followed everything, God showed himself. And, and this is not done all the time. This is the one time that God showed himself to the people and they were shocked. So that they can always tell the story, God, we saw God in that sense. It will be a once a year affair, right? Uh, for what we can see, yes. Mm. For what we can see. But... Uh, when we carry on, we'll, we'll see the rest of it. Because it happens again. Uh, but it is not a regular thing. Okay? 
I'll see you tomorrow.